Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to our movie club. Today we are going to discuss a movie, an old one, The Outlaw Josie Wales. Mm, and I forgot the year, let me see. 1976. Wow, pretty old one. So I wasn't born at when this movie was filmed. Vasans, what about you? <laughs> are you younger than this movie? <laughs> no, my, pa my father would be five. Your father was five. Okay. okay. Yeah. So pretty, pretty, pretty old one. Why we choose it if it's so uh, old? Gerard, do you know? Because teacher didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, he Oscar he, nominated. <laughs> but he did not say this. He he was a like how, how to say it. He has some list how to support this. You know this choice. <laughs> do you remember? Have you read this? I don't remember. Well, I asked for for a movie with uh, Indians, you know, these Indians with feather, with <laughs> not, not dots. <laughs> and I was about to suggest some movie, but it was uh, a comedy or something, so not not a profound movie, right? So we have chosen another one, another one that has uh, that well known with uh, I don't know with Americans probably to get some cultural code from it. Am I right, Kishuri? Yeah, this is a, it's a Clint Eastwood movie who's a very famous movie star. Everyone in America knows Clint Eastwood. Uh, it has uh, a little Civil War background in it. We had a Civil War in America, the North against the South, the Union against the Confederacy. So there's a little bit of that in here. And there's a little bit of Indians in here. There's the Comanches, the old guy's a Cherokee Indian. And the, the fat woman is a Navajo. So there's three different Indian tribes involved in this. And there's an old woman who's prejudiced and stuck in her ways and intolerant of other people's beliefs. So it has a lot of different personalities that interact in this movie. Uh, and it's also got a revenge motive. So it has a lot of the movie elements that you typically find in yeah. American movies, and it's not woke. It was before the woke era, so <laughs> you know. It's it's at at some point automatically, right? <laughs> not not a woke movie. <laughs> okay, and this old lady, she was a pilgrim, right? Can we say so? A pilgrim? Mm -hmm. No, pilgrims were back in the early days. Once we became a country, there were there are no more pilgrims. Okay, she's okay. she's just uh, she inherited some land from her husband or son i forget who so son. she's she's from her son so she's traveling from kansas to missouri to take ownership of this land mm -hmm. that was left to her so she's moving to a new home so in that sense she's kind of like a pilgrim because she's going to a new land mm -hmm. to start a new home but uh, yeah. we wouldn't call her a pilgrim in this case just just relocating and, uh, and she look at like a religious person right with uh, with this dress with this i don't know intention to have a, have prayings or something but i don't know is a pilgrim like a notion any anyhow related to religious thing or not so most of the pilgrims were like old-fashioned people i don't know yeah the pilgrims they came to america for religious freedom mm -hmm. But they weren't, you know, overly religious. They were they were Christians, but they came really for religion, freedom of religion, and a new life, new opportunities. So no, we don't think of them as strictly religious people. They just wanted freedom and to start over. Okay, okay, I see. Okay, to you know, to to address people with the right name, we have a cast here provided by Teacher Lee. Thank you, Teacher Lee. So let's figure out the names. Whoa, could you please read the cast? Yes. Uh, Josie Wales was a main character. Character? Mm -hmm. Missouri family whose wife and son are killed by a union? union group called the Red Legs. Mm -hmm. To understand what is union? Union is something together. No? Yes. Okay. Anderson? Leader of the of Confederate group that includes Josie and Jamie. Mm -hmm. 
Джеми Мамба по Фандерсон конфедерит клуб за Escape с Лиз Джоси. Do you remember this uh, Jamie? It was a boy, yes. right? Younger person. Okay, what about bad guys? Captain Captain Terrell. Terrell. Mm -hmm. Terrell. In charge of the Red Rex. Uh, a union? A, a union group that mass massacres. 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 Anderson Confederate man. Mm -hmm. What else? Do you know this word? What's massacre? Can you yes, when you kill people, a uh, bunch of people, uh, a particular race or something, a group of people, so that's yeah. called a massacre. Teacher, do, does massacre, massacre as a term relate to, I don't know, to, to a way how it's done? A lot of blood, you know, <laughs> all these things. Massacre means to kill many people indiscriminately really you just you kill anybody you just bah, 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 you or you blow up or you're a suicide bomber mm -hmm. massacre just means to kill a lot of people without regard to who they are you don't care you just randomly kill a bunch of people yeah or, or on purpose <laughs> okay but, can i but, ask but, something Yeah. What about genocide? Genocide is the same people type of people. Yeah, well, genocide is the massacre of an entire ethnic group or oh. culture. Okay. Massacre can be anything. A massacre, uh, like if the uh, an enemy attacks a a, a, a camp, right? Let's say that you know then and kill everybody in there, then that's a massacre. Okay. Uh, if if the Taliban go into a city and just kill everybody, that's a massacre. A massacre yeah. is basically killing on a wide scale, <laughs> with no reason or logic. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, teacher Lee, uh, yeah. The, if uh, some some school student uh, does that, is that also considered a, a massacre? You know, he goes into a stadium and uh, his school and he mm -hmm. kills you a fellow. Students, yeah. About mass shooting, right? Mass yeah, shoot, yeah, shooter, yeah. Uh, if, you, if, if you kill five or ten people, to me, that's not a massacre. A massacre is a large group of people, maybe like hundreds. Mm -hmm. uh, if, uh, a school shooting where five or ten people get killed, to me, that's not a massacre. I see. Uh, I see. Now, if they have bombs and dynamite and they blow up half the school and kill, you know, three hundred people, that's a massacre. <laughs> I see. I see. Uh, okay, let's let's continue with the cast, but let's choose someone else. Jihan, could you please continue? We we finished on Fletch, Fletcher, I guess. Okay, so I should continue from Fletcher. Yes, please. Okay, uh, Fletcher, a Union bounty hunter that uh, persuades Anderson's group to surrender to Union group under Captain Terrell, mm -hmm. uh, Josie's uh, companions. Uh, can, can I please ask you what does it mean persuade to persuade someone? Uh, it's like convince someone to do something. I guess, um, I, I guess it's kind of different. It's kind of to chase someone, right? Usually, persuade. Well, convince. It means convince. Convince. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You, you have to okay. give them a reason to do it. You know, you you. They may be reluctant to do it, so you just say, you know, we, we'll treat you well. Oh, okay, you know, so convince, persuade, same meaning. <laughs> I see, I see. Could you please continue? Okay, uh, Joseph's companions, lone uh, weighty, I think, mm -hmm. uh, old uh, Cherokee, Indian chief, uh, little moonlight, old uh, Navaju, Indian school. How can I pronounce this one? Squaw. Squaw, um, grand, a grand Masara, old women from Canisus moving to new land. Laura, uh, Sarah's uh, granddaughter. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that uh, Indian names they always have meaning, like right? Long Weighty, mm -hmm. <laughs> Little Moonlight? <laughs> we, have a lot of, we have a lot of jokes about this in, in, in Russian language. I don't know. We usually make the names like a part of the joke. <laughs> Mine is Lazybone. 
<laughs> Lazy bones. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, teacher Lee, what is squaw? Indian squaw. That's just the Indian word for a, a woman. Ah, okay. okay. They just call them squaws. Okay, and the last one is ten bears, right? Comanche oh. Indian chief yep. who threatens Sarah's homestead. Okay, so I think we, we are ready to the to the story. So we have today by courtesy of teacher Lee, we have a talking point. So if everyone watches the movie, we can you know skip the plot and just uh, go to this talking points. What do you think? Will it work? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know you watched the, the beginning of the movie at least. Let's start. <laughs> let's start with uh -huh. you. <laughs> So would you like me to read the sentence? Yes, let's read. Let's, I don't know, recall how it was in the movie, maybe some questions, anything. Maybe we we'll want to add something. Jose joins Anderson's group to get revenge on Union for his family's death. Yeah. Um, the film starts with um, his uh, being on the field with his son and the wife called the small boy to have a kind of just a um, bout or something like that. And at that moment, um, he heard some noises, some screams, and his family was killed. Yeah. So he wanted to get through range. Or can I say, teacher Lee, a range? Uh, you mean a range, revenge? Avenge. The, the verb is avenge. Yep. Yeah, he wanted to avenge their deaths by right. getting revenge. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, do, do you remember what he was doing on his land? How, how uh, it was? I think he was cultivating the land or something like that. I, I think there is a word to plow, right, teacher? To plow something. Plow, plow, oh, land, plow the land. Yeah, plow the land. So he used this, you know, old fashioned uh, technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you make a slice of the yours and put it like in different yeah. way, right? Yeah. Why we do this? Do you know? Because he is a farmer, my dear friend. Yeah, but why we, you know, why we need to like reward uh, this slice? To make, of the, to make the soil um how can i say i don't know but to make the soil fresh have a mm -hmm. breath <laughs> <clears throat> i think to destroy this you know this surface of grass and put the grass inside the yours so or now it's a fertilizer it's my, my... So it's a kind of maybe renew the soil I'm not, I, I'm not a farmer but I, I think maybe there's two reasons one is as layla said uh, when you grow crops, it takes nutrients out of the dirt, mm -hmm. the surf, the surface dirt. So by plowing, you mix the deeper dirt with the shallow dirt, and you you kind of mix more nutrients in the dirt. But also, you're digging a a hole, you're digging a little small ditch, so you can put seeds there, and then you can cover the seeds. <coughs> right. So I guess there's a couple reasons for doing it, but <laughs> I always thought it was to make a hole to put the seeds in so you could cover up the seeds and they would grow because you got to plant seeds, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, um, so for what reason uh, his family was killed, massacred? I don't know. Well, what do you think? For what reason? Uh, I thought about it as well, Iwan, but uh, I think it's a kind of, um, there's a kind of war Southern and northern northern people. If I'm wrong, tell me, please. So he's a southerner, and uh, a group of people under the command of um, that trace. But let me see. So this guy, this bad guy was a uh... Terrell, Captain Terrell, I think. Yeah. So they attacked him. Because he wanted to lead a good life. I think in the past he was some um, bad guy or something like that. Yeah, but if you ask me, the war is not, not an excuse, you know, for this. War is between soldiers and soldiers, army and army, right? So, but this gang, they killed who? A little boy and a woman. 
Uh, because I think in the past he was a kind of um, rebellious person or a criminal, I'm not sure. But the <laughs> thing is that it was unexpected for him because I can see his face, you know, I was surprised because it was unexpected out of, of the blue, you know. I, I can't remember the reason they did it. If it, it was either to rape his wife or it was just because they were northern soldiers, northern people, and they, the north and the south were kind of had been at war. So they might have just hated southerners yeah. and wanted to destroy them, to drive them off the land. I don't know. It wasn't really clear in, in the movie. So uh, for, for a moment, I thought maybe it's, it's a part of this, you know, scorched land land strategy or something so just destroy you know destroy anything to to make your enemy weaker i guess so something like this <clears throat> okay let's go to the to the to the next one gerard please could you <clears throat> fletcher persuades anderson's group to surrender to the red legs yeah they put, fletcher persuades everybody let's uh, save josie and jamie yeah, but why do they need to surrender at all? Like, uh, you know, the war is finished, they don't need to worry to being to be caught because they were all lost. So they, they ha always had the risk to be killed because of that. So they wanted to change their lives, but it was a trap. Mm -hmm. what, what they were doing before, be, be, before this? What was their job? Oh, like, uh, I think they were stealing banks, you know, robbing. I don't know. Well, I, I, I cannot say for sure, but for me, they looked like a, some kind of, I don't know, a, a gang of people who wants revenge or something like this. So but they, they do need something to live. They need something to eat. How they do get that? The stealing, I don't know. robbing, I guess, I guess. Yeah, the, the war lasted four years. <clears throat> 1861 to 1865 and when the war ended like you can imagine i don't know if you can imagine or not but this was a civil war this was americans against americans sometimes brothers against brothers some brothers joined the north some brothers joined the south it was family fighting family mm -hmm. americans fighting americans you were fighting your own people due to ideological differences, you know, slavery, uh, there were other issues too. But when the war ended, there was a lot of anger, a lot of hate, a lot of passion. And a lot of people, when the war ended, they said, hell no, the war's not over. I'm going to keep killing those sons of bitches, you know? <laughs> so a lot of people refused to stop fighting and they kept, you know, they formed gangs and they kept attacking the other side. So, this the red legs were one of these northern gangs and anderson's group was one of the southern gangs and they were used to fighting and they really didn't want to stop fighting they were used to killing and raping and stealing and taking what they want so maybe that's just the reason they attacked uh josie's farm was because it was it was southerners and these guys were northerners and they just like to destroy southern people's things you know they've been doing it for four years they couldn't stop mm -hmm. so so fletcher tried to convince the southern group you know the war is over you know stop fighting you know meet our group surrender give us your weapons and we'll let you guys go in peace you know that 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 <laughs> Do you think he had some promises that they will be okay or something? I think he believed, I think Fletcher believed Terrell, mm -hmm. but it yeah. didn't work out that way. Yeah. <laughs> I think Fletcher had, a, Fletcher had a good heart. We see that at the end of the movie. Fletcher had a good heart, uh, well, but he was a, a little naive or he didn't judge people well. I don't know. Well, could be, but he was kind of a I would call him kind of a double traitor or something. Yeah. He switched switch sides very easily, right? Well, he was a bounty hunter. He wasn't a, a north-south person. Fletcher was a bounty hunter. He just, you pay him money and he'll go find a bad guy for you. Okay. My moral so was in a, my pocket, right? Yeah, he was a mercenary. 
I see. I see. Okay, Sara, could you please take a next point? Yes. Point five. Uh, so I guess. Three. Three? Yep. yep. Okay. Terry betrays, betrays Andrew's men and masquerades, masquerades them except for Jules and Jimmy, who didn't surrender. Josie gets revenge on Terry's red legs. Josie's hunted by oh, a no, bony just, hunter. Talk, just talk about number three. Describe what happened in the movie <laughs> for number three. Do you remember this moment in the movie, this episode? It's very Um, it seems. It's very. Uh, Tara was a betrayer. So maybe he's stab Andres on his back, and, then, and therefore he killed everybody except uh, Josie and Jenny. Mm -hmm. And do you remember this moment when they have to like abandon their weapons, right? They are the arms. It was a lot of tense in this moment, right? So they and I, I remember the, the young guy, what his his name, Jamie. He did not want to leave his uh, rifle, right? He he right. kind of had uh, a feeling, I guess, that something goes wrong. But it's 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 interesting question. So if the if you don't want to abandon to give your weapon, right? Why you why you went there? Why why you went to surrender if you don't want to <laughs> to be disarmed? <laughs> it's also a strange moment. But also in that in that time, I mean, surrender means you promise to quit fighting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You you still need a weapon because you have to shoot animals for food. There's Indians in that land. The Indi you know, you need a gun for defense because there's crazy people going around, you know? So I wouldn't have wanted to give up my weapon either because that's your self-defense back in those days. <laughs> well, in that case, you surrender. 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 You surrender. It's kind of a, just your good word, right? I say, yeah, you, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's we won't believe, shoot you right? anymore. You don't shoot us, we won't shoot you, you know. That's really what I would have expected, you know. Yeah. But it it implies you need some trust between these uh, sides, I guess. You have to trust each other. Well, I guess it, it, it's when it went wrong, right? So they have this, how we call it, automatic weapon, right? Machine gun. Gatlin gun. Gatlin gun. So it's just a name, right? It's a of special inventor. kind of special kind of gun with like ten barrels, and when you you crank it, uh, one barrel shoots, and then it rotates, and another barrel shoots, and it's like a, it's like a machine gun, but it's an old, the original machine gun. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask Vasan. Vasan, do you understand why we have to choose this barrel? Why why we have to rotate it? Why we don't shoot through the one? You, you're muted, Vosons. Yeah, uh, so that uh, we have to rotate so that the trigger would hit the bullet point, I, I believe. There's a hole, it's yeah, a but, circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do you understand there is a circle with many, many like barrels, right? So you shoot every every new bullet, shoot through, through the new uh, like barrel, right? Why we do yeah. this? Why we rotate them? Why? So it's a convenience. I, I believe it's just a convenience of uh, reloading the bullets. You know, once you shoot, mm -hmm. uh, the other one uh, loads up. Uh, ah, the, I you, you think that it's a, like a, a reloading process, right? Yeah. Okay, Leila, who you correct? I, I I was <laughs> asking uh, also to kill more people. Yeah, but well, why you don't, why you cannot kill more people with one <laughs> barrel? So oh. as far as I understand, you know, the, the problem is with heat. When you shoot, it's it's explosion. There are a lot of heats. And metal, when it's uh, warm, right, it's, it's going to be not just warm. It's actually going to be at very high temperature. It, and it starts to lose his, like, abilities. So you need a 
straight line for, for the shooting, right? <laughs> but oh. when, it's, when it's hot, it, it can be uh, deformed very easily. So that's why you rotate, you change them to, to, to what? To cool them, right? Is it yeah, to keep them from heating up, basically, yeah, to, to yeah. allow it a, a short time to cool from for the next bullet to shoot. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. If, if you shot through one barrel, this is an old design. Don't forget, old design, when you shoot a bullet, the, the metal got hot. So if you kept shooting through one barrel, boom, 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 the barrel would get red hot. Also, the bullets have gunpowder. So if the mm -hmm. barrel gets red hot, the bullet might explode inside the barrel. Right. So the Gatlin gun, the, the, the way they solved that problem at that time was they, they rotated barrels. So when a bullet shot, then they would shoot from nine other barrels. And by the time they got back to that barrel, it had cooled sufficiently that another bullet could shoot without overheating the barrel. Yeah. And so overheating is very kind of very destructive for the gun so you can after 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 you overheat it one time you can shoot but you probably will never reach the target anymore right. <laughs> you shoot somewhere so it was an engineering uh, solution to yeah shooting nice many bullets quickly yeah, yeah nice, nice one yeah <laughs> okay let's go to the next one it's number four and i think we can combine it with number five what's up could you please yes uh after that, uh, Josie get in, gets involved in the uh, scene. He started to shoot. Uh, uh, can we say that have a or ambush? I believe. Yes, he was in, in danger, right? He was uh, yeah. terrified. But what happened by this massacre, yeah. right? Yeah. He jumped in and into the scene and he started to shoot everybody. Uh, he saved that little kid, you know, the boy. And he escaped with him. Uh, and I, I forgot the name of that uh, kid. Jenny. Jenny. Jenny, okay. Yeah. yeah, we have this written there, Jenny, a member of Anderson Confederate Group that escapes Josie, right? Yeah. He looks like a good guy, right? Yes, he believed that. Yeah. Young kid, yeah. <laughs> Young kid. Naive. Yeah, he, he believed that Anderson uh, betrayed them, you know. He saw Anderson in the crew. Uh, he was standing beside the captain, so he thought he is one of the key. He betrayed them. He's a traitor. So mm -hmm. He told that. He Do told that to Joseph. Osan, so how how Josie uh, managed to survive? Why he wasn't killed? In uh, the beginning, yeah, when, you know. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, it was a, a, a peculiar vehicle. You know, uh, it it has a cover. Uh, a screen uh, above the cart. Uh, mm -hmm. He hide inside. But, what I mean is that he he did not uh, came to, to surrender, right? He he did not want to surrender. Uh, and why? Yes. Why do you think mm. he did not want? To? I don't know. Maybe the uh, feel the avenging feel inside him made him have to surrender because he know who killed his family. So. He didn't want to surrender to the same guy. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to kill. Uh, and do you remember guy. Fletcher, his commander? He said, "You know how it, this will end, right? <laughs> Eventually, you will be killed." Yeah. And he looked. It seems he was okay with this, right? Yeah. Do you remember at that moment? At that moment, who uh, Josie? Who he blamed for this massacre? Who was in charge, in, in his opinion? Josie. Mm -hmm. Josie, did he blame uh, Fletcher for this? Oh, yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, he thought Fletcher was a good man, but the young kid uh, blamed Fletcher that he did mm -hmm. that to them. 
Gerard, is it right? I, I don't remember who was. I, I think that Josie was blaming uh, Fletcher for that book. Josie was blaming Carol. Well, well, Fletcher's the one that convinced Anderson's men to surrender. So mm -hmm. when they all got killed, Josie thought Fletcher betrayed him. But really, Fletcher didn't. Fletcher was told by Terrell that they would treat the men with respect. So when Terrell killed all the men, that surprised Fletcher, too. So Fletcher didn't really betray Anderson, but it looked like it because... Terrell killed all the men during the surrender. So Josie thought Fletcher betrayed him, but really Fletcher didn't. He was also tricked by Terrell. Well, that's that's right. I, I, I can agree with this. But if Fletcher was a my commander, let's say, and after killing the whole team, he started to he continued to cooperate with Anderson. It's something bad in my book, right? So if your team just killed, you have to <laughs> Do well, something. that's right. Yeah. I mean, Fletcher was being paid by Terrell, so he continued to work with him. Uh, yeah. So in that sense, yeah, he still was with the bad guys, but Fletcher himself would not have massacred these men who were surrendering honorably. But, well, but yeah, he, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you think it's okay that Fletcher behaved well in this, in this regard? No. I watched that party one. I remember that um, Fletcher was uh, given more money to um, catch um, our guy and uh, also Jamie, I mean, Josie and Jamie. So he didn't react. He only said, why did you do this? Why, you know, just you promised, but you didn't keep your promise. I mean. I, yeah, he, he was I a little bit, for a little bit upset. Right. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought if I were him, I would attack him. Well, yes, it's something expected. I cannot believe, you know, that you, you came there with your friends, you know, you promised them everything will be okay. Then your friends got killed and you say, well, Not... well, I'm a little bit upset, but I have my money still, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but a teacher Lee said, Previously, uh, <laughs> this guy, I mean, Anderson, mm -hmm. is a person, how can I say, likes money. Sorry, Fletcher. Fletcher, Fletcher likes money. Mer mercenary, right? Mercenary. Right. Well, not a good uh, characteristic, if you ask me. Okay, of Layla, who, who is a bounty hunter? Sorry, my dear friend. Yes, who is a bounty hunter? So Josie is hunted by bounty hunters. Who are they? Uh, I remember two ugly men, the ugliest man in my life. <laughs> uh, with rifles, right? Yep. And uh, they thought they caught Josie. Jamie was uh, lying down on the ground because he was wounded. And... Uh, they called another guy. Hey, we called Josie. Come here. Is it right? So uh, bounty hunters, right? It's uh, just a m man, you know, who who makes a living by hunting others, right? Hunting um, the wanted people. Yeah, correct. The yeah. government will often pay money if you capture or kill a bad guy. Right. So. So even today, we have bounty hunters in the U.S. that will go after wanted criminals and try to capture them and bring them back to the government and get paid money for doing that. But they cannot kill them. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they can't kill them. Yeah. Nowadays. <laughs> uh, Teacher Lee, here, the money they just um, offered is good. Five thousand dollars, something like yep. that. Different amounts. It depends yeah, on how bad. Yeah. Yeah, different amount, but in general, it's a good amount, right? So people can risk their lives for that. So it's not just a, for one dinner, right? It's something that you can live with. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It, it's a lot of money okay. for just 
bringing someone back, you know, with you got a gun, so you're coming with me, you know. <laughs> so, Leila, Sounds would you like to be a bounty hunter? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. You know the answer before you ask me. Right? <laughs> He's teasing you, Ivarila. <laughs> yeah, yeah, teasing me. Okay, okay. So, so I'm surprised that Erdogan in Turkey didn't offer rewards for any traders to be turned in. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he has police for that, right? For, yeah. Why why you need bounty hunters? Yeah. As you know, in some uh, countries. In some countries, if you let me make an example, it's not bounty hunters as, as we understand, but it's something similar as, as, as I understand it. For instance, if you uh, neighbor, let's say, parked his car, car on an inappropriate place, yeah. and you called police and told, uh, told them about it, you will get a part of fine that he paid. It's kind oh. of, yeah, it's in Germany, for instance. It's you know, niche. I, I like a niche. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> but it's officially and they say it, it's very efficient because people like to your money in this way you know <laughs> that's a good idea yeah <laughs> okay let's go to the number six Vova, could you please Josie meets long waiting and with a little moonlight who are they? Who is long, long weighty and lay in little moonlight? Uh, they are Indian. Mm -hmm. um, but long weighty, he's uh, not, um, not Indian. But a real Indian, right? He's a spoiled Indian. <laughs> Can we say so? Spoiled uh, by white people. <laughs> I like so there, there were, uh, 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 a bunch of little jokes about this, right? Yeah. Only Indian can be silent. <laughs> Some places. I remember this is, this is a lady. Okay, so anything special about Lonnie Waiti? Let, let me ask you in this way why he is important for this uh, story? What do you think? Because he helped Josie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, out of the blue, he, Josie has an assistant, right? Someone he can trust, someone who can help him. Own team. I guess it's it's good to do. A sidekick. <laughs> like Batman and Robin, Josie and Lone Wady. <laughs> <laughs> a dream team, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's go fuse. Oh, I again forgot how to pronounce it. Jihan, could you please take next one? Seven. Okay. Uh, Grandma Sarah and Laura are attacked by Indians, and Josie helped them. Yeah. Um, was it was it Indians or Red Legs? I forgot who attacked them. Uh, it wasn't Indians, I guess. It was a how we call it a gang, just a gang of. A, a gang. My, my mistake. Mm -hmm. gang, a gang of men attacked them. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me change it here. Comancheros. The Comancheros. Yeah. Ah, Comancheros. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh. Well, Gerard, you have to tell us what is Comanchero. Comanchero, the, the a gang of people that sold things to the Comanches, like alcohol, ah. and things like this, to okay. treat with pals, you know. Well, they they made they made a wood a wood business with them. I see. I see. Cheap things for uh, expensive pals yeah. or different animals. Kind of like bandits, <laughs> renegades. Uh, disgust, nasty, very nasty. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, prone yeah. to rape women. <laughs> Jiham, do you remember this this episode? So, how Josie helped him? Then? Okay, um, he was traveling with the old man, and in his way, he saw the traces of the carts. I think. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, they hide behind um, the hell, I think. Um, and when they saw that they were trying to um, attack Laura. Um, he's, uh, then the boss came and said, no, we will not uh, attack her or rape her because um, they will give it to her, to, uh, to his boss to get a lot of money. Uh, so uh, the old man, I think um, he made a sound like a rock fall, a small rock. And then they found them. Um, and Josie tried to help them um, and, kill, and kill the other men. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of a, not a pleasant uh, scene to me. When I watched yeah. it, it was kind of ah, something, not, <laughs> something not good to, to watch it, right? 
yeah. especially when all this ugly man was uh, kind of a, how to say it around this uh, young woman so it was a moment of, not, not a pleasant moment i am clever i stopped there <laughs> 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 okay, so let, let's skip the next one. So, so Josie helps them reach new homestead. And number one, I guess, number nine, I guess, interesting. Jacques, could you please take it? Josie. Uh, Josie helps them reach Sarah's new homestead left to her by her husband. Yeah, but it's pretty easy. Let's let's go to the next one. And Josie makes a truce with ten bears and his Comanche Indians. Homestead has a dry well. Yeah. What 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 does mean make a truce? A pact that, that no war no war between them. Have peace. Peace. Do do, do you remember this scene with a knife? Yeah, cut their hands. Uh, they share the, their blood. Like uh, an oath. They meet an oath. Yeah, blood a blood oath. The blood mingles, and that means you're gonna keep your promise yeah in a modern world with all these viruses and diseases it's not something i would <laughs> we have an excuse nice excuse not to do that nowadays <laughs> yeah. okay so how he uh convinced 10 bears you know to make this pact i uh, he went alone to meet with him that was very brave <laughs> and very risky <laughs> because the indians could have killed him could have killed him easily mm -hmm. and they pro he promised that would respect them and only would kill the prey that they need to eat and and all of that and uh ten bears uh, believed him told that he he said that his word was hot iron in it something like this so yeah. so he thought that he was uh telling the truth yeah you're right who are uh, the ten bears? The uh, chief Indian of the Comanches. Okay. Well, he was the Indian chief. So what happened oh. in the cowboy days is that the white man would uh, create farms mm -hmm. and they would have cows. Right. And they would raise the cows for meat and milk and they would put a fence around the cows. And when they collected the cows, the Indians no longer had any cow, any cows or buffalo to hunt for for food. So yeah. the white man took away the Indians food source, meat source. Yeah. So that's what caused Indian wars. So okay. what so what the deal that Josie made with Tin Bears is that this woman, Sarah, her farm and her cows they would share those with the Indians. So okay. when the Indians wanted to kill a cow for meat to feed themselves for a month, that they, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't call the sheriff. They wouldn't go to war. They'd say, if you can kill a cow once in a while to feed your tribe, that's okay. We'll let you do it and we'll live in peace. Okay. So, so that's what that deal was about. We'll put the Comanche mark on our cows you own the cows we're going to use them but when you want one for food you come and take it and that's okay you know it's a good deal teacher lee it was a deal yeah <laughs> well interesting that uh, you know nobody make nobody offered this deal before right before him so it looks like a well, you know, probably it, it would work. It's a kind of a win-win, but it only work if all the sides are kind of uh, trust each other, right? Yeah. If <laughs> without and, trust, and, it's possible. And, and ten bears had been lied to before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and they kept being pushed. It's like lone whitey. They kept getting pushed farther and farther west. They kept getting lied to and lied to and lied to. Yeah. But but Ten Bear said, well, you know, you're promising me nothing. I can kill those cows now if I want to. Yeah. He says, yeah. that's right. I'm, I'm not giving you anything you can't already, you don't already have, but we're promising you peace. If you oh. take a cow, we won't fight you. We won't try to kill you. We'll live with you in peace and we'll let you take those cows like you do anyway. 
but we won't, you know, fight you. We won't call the cavalry and, and have them come massacre all of you for stealing our cows. So he right. promised them the same thing they had really, but in a peaceful manner with the white Ooh. people. So. Well, I guess if I wore uh, 10 beers, I, I would not buy it. <laughs> I would, I would. Yeah. I would say, you know, your offer is weak, you know, offer. <laughs> So yeah, what me, would me you say? Too. Leila? What would you say, Ivan? What would I say? I would say I, I would just kill this white man, you know, because he, <laughs> he went there for my land and he offers me my own cattle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and he do it in a very i would say con confident way so if i were a boss of comanche i would say just kill him you know so that's <laughs> nothing new there <laughs> yeah but basically what he said was look tin bears the white man's coming we're going to come in here and we're going to take over all this land and you're going to be killed or pushed west you know if you live on this woman's land with her peacefully they won't chase you off. You can stay on this land. So he, he just kind of made him a, a smart deal, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Sans, why it's so important that uh, Homestead has a dry well? Why do you think? Yeah, it's, it's written on num number white. So Homestead, it's a kind of a land, has a dry well. Why it's important? Mm -hmm. I don't know why uh, it's it's useless I, in my opinion a driver <laughs> but in general in general so uh, if you build if you build a new house or a new village right a new branch I don't know how to call it like a, a new house in a village right you are founding a new settlement so why you start with a well because oh, you need well means uh, water is important so that you can uh, Continue your uh, agriculture work. It's based all the agriculture work is based on water, uh, water ways. Uh, they are nearby water ways. So, yeah, I, I remember once you shared a picture of uh, wells or kind of uh, pools in your village, right? And you said yeah. that people who own this are rich people. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. They don't have to wait for the rain. And, you don't have to pray the gods for the rain. <laughs> so you have to have a well or you have to pray the god for the for the rain, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we didn't have water pipes back then. So if you didn't have a well, you had no water. With no water, you're gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the cows, cows need water too. So <laughs> well, you know, in, in I, I don't know how it's in, in different countries, but in Russia, in, in Russia. Every city, every village, anything has a river inside. So we actually don't have a city without a river. We always say that Moscow wants this river, St. Petersburg. So, so we always have it, like a fresh water for yeah, for, for a city. Yeah. In ancient times, they, they used to build the uh, dig the man-made wells, but nowadays it's uh, uh, bore wells. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now in Florida. Uh, we actually have underground water. We call them aquifers. Mm -hmm. So we actually drill down into underground water and pump it up into water tanks. And yeah. our big water tanks supply fresh water to our cities. Good. Good. Yeah. Vasans, could you please cover the, a, a few? Uh, Jacques, we just, you know, we just spoke about this deal between uh, Ten Bears and uh, <laughs> Josie, and I said that I would not buy it. I would not make. I, I would not accept this offer. What do you think? Is Ten Bears, uh, was Ten Bears making a good job by accepting this offer or not? Because he didn't have anything to lose. Because if uh, Josie behaves. Uh, didn't behave, uh, you know, Tembers had more, sol more soldiers, <laughs> more Indians to kill him. So he has to, Josie had to keep his promise. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's another, another good good point, right? If, if this white <laughs> stupid man uh, <laughs> will make something bad, you know, I just kill him at that moment. Right? Why I need to kill him now? <laughs> <laughs> I always on time on killing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. Okay, Vasan, could you please cover the next few one? I, I think we can combine them. You know, just just a battle, right? 
Okay. Uh, from 12? From 10, yes. Okay, 10. Yep. Um, it tells that uh, like attacks kind of from sudden are defeated. Uh, and there was a huge battle. Uh, even the ladies helped Josie to, uh, to hold the back, hold the enemies back. Uh, and there was a huge gunfight and Terrell managed to escape. Uh, Josie followed him. And finally, he caught him by the trace of his blood shed. Uh, once he found him, he tried, he didn't kill immediately, you know. He uh, kind of uh, <laughs> know, uh, threatening him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was pulling the trigger only. Uh, but, uh, he did nothing, but uh, Terrell tried to uh, stab him with his sword. Um, then Josie killed him with his own, uh, own yeah. sword. Do, do you think that uh, Josie tried to kind of uh, uh, torture him with this, you know, fail, false shooting? Because at that yes, moment, <laughs> yeah, at that moment, I yeah. saw that Josie just went crazy, you know, because of <laughs> all these memories and something, and he just didn't understand which weapon is loaded, which is not. So I, I, I wasn't sure. Was it a uh, torture? I, yeah, I thought yeah, he didn't want him to. Uh die quickly he wanted mm -hmm. to kill him again and again because he has so much uh, to get the revenge you know so uh, he was just pulling the trigger uh, he was venting out his anger by doing that. and finally he uh, killed him okay what what was the trick uh, at the beginning of the battle why, why Juzi managed to win this battle what? Do you remember Josie? there was a trick in the beginning of the battle, right? He was standing in front of the house. Yeah. He, he was, was pretending he's, he's the only warrior on this battle, right? But yeah. then there was an, how we call it, an, an ambush, right? So everyone, including all ladies, started to shoot. So it, was a, <laughs> it was a tactic, right? Ja, do you remember this uh, situation in Saloon? So how they, uh, could you please describe the last two points? Uh, Josie meets Fletcher and two Rangers in a saloon. Uh, Patrons covers for Josie, calling him Wilson. Okay, one of the, ah, Texas Rangers, yes. Uh, the, the Fletcher covered him. Uh, he didn't, Fletcher didn't identify him as uh, Josie Wu. Why, why he did this? Because uh, I think he had some conscience, you know? that he wasn't the situation wasn't fair for Josie because all his companions were killed unfairly mm -hmm. and he wanted to he wanted he thought that a sparing king would be nice and <laughs> fair so do you think at the begin at the end uh, Josie and Fletcher they kind of forgive you every each other yeah. and they, they make could... amends <laughs> <laughs> they made amends <laughs> made amends yep good so can can they be friends after all? No friend, no friends, but at least they respect each other. They won't they won't shoot one to another. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the, the end is typical ending of a movie, a Western movie, no? The sun <laughs> set and the walking the horse, you know? Yeah, the most tense dialogue of the movie, right? And on the sunset mm -hmm. with the uh, guns in their hands. <laughs> But it was a tense moment. I, I like it. I like such kind of dialogues. Is it you, John Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> I, we missed some interesting moments on the movie. I like the one, the one with the carpet bagger and the barge, you know, they close the barge and <laughs> Josie has, uh, wait until the last moment to cut the, the rope <laughs> with a shoot ah, from yeah. the rifle. That was a very good moment. It was kind of a ferry, right? So yes. who transferred the soldier. Ferry. Yeah, but the barge uh, there was a rope yeah to every uh, side of the river so without the rope the barge go go uh, down the river without control yeah yeah a good one yeah and Josie was so confident right so um like, like 
<laughs> and this carpet bagger was very annoying, you know, because once he identified him and, you know, he had a big problem in this city, you remember? Yeah. yeah. A stupid carpet bagger always selling this product, magic product that heals everything, anything. <laughs> well, I, I actually don't understand cl clearly this line. It's just for, for irony, right? So mm. to make some humor in the movie. So the guy who is, was selling some, you know, some something. He said, this is the last bottle of the most beautiful, what it was. Elixir, I think. You Elixir, medication, whatever you want. In those days, the business entrepreneurs would sell alcohol as like a, a miracle health drink. It'll cure <laughs> cancer, you know. Uh, so it, we call it snake oil or, or you know, elixir, magic uh potion that would make you healthy and cure all your problems now the the raft operator was a businessman he was an entrepreneur notice he was very smart if his yeah. customer was a southern person he would sing a southern song away down south in the land of cotton old time there are not forgotten you know dixie <laughs> but if it was a northern customer he would sing a northern song so he right. was very you know uh, you pay me. You pay me. I'm yours. <laughs> yeah. So he he tried to to grease you know to to flatter the customer by singing whatever song they're patriotic to to get on their good side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As always, we have a few questions on our Padlet, and it's good. And let's for the first one, Leila. Do you remember that? Uh, could you read the first one, please, and answer it? Okay. What does the spitting signify? Is it necessary? Is spitting common in your country? Yep, I'm ready, teacher. What would you like to ask me? Yeah, could you please answer this question? Okay, spitting for me, it's rude. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I hate, you know, if somebody is spitting, I had to see him like that. Is that necessary? Oh, could be necessary uh, while shooting a film, an actor or other people, you know, can spit because to take the attention of the audience, mm -hmm. um, spitting um, could be a moment of thinking, just uh, spitting. Ah, teacher Lee helped me, chewing tobacco, spitting. Yeah. Or, uh, I don't know, but it is not common in my country. And if I see somebody spitting, I usually warn him or her. <laughs> well, in my place, you know, some people spit, spit, spit a lot, but it's always a kind of a, a mark of low class. So if you do yep. this, you are, you are, you know, someone uneducated, someone, you know, from... <laughs> I, I would say I, I don't know I don't know the right name for this, but it's you know it's a low low class of society, so people don't do this. Usually. You see, one teacher Lee wrote something. It is illegal in some countries. It is not illegal in Turkey, but it is not acceptable. I know only one country when it's illegal in Singapore, and you will pay really? like one thousand dollars for this if you speak <laughs> once. Yeah. <laughs> It's considered unhygienic, unhealthy, unclean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you don't you don't need to spit normally unless you're like chewing tobacco, uh, and you you got to spit it out because you can't swallow tobacco. When you're chewing tobacco, you've got to spit it out. Yeah. And so it's just, it's sometimes disgusting. they have a toothpick in their mouth, <laughs> and you know just yeah. playing with the toothpick, and then they spit. Oh my god. <laughs> now in the in movies you'll see people will spit on someone's boot that's that's like you know that's like asking to be killed when you spit on somebody's boot that's very disrespectful it's like a <laughs> throw your gauntlet or how we call it yeah yeah throwing down a gauntlet yeah <laughs> yeah exactly okay Jukan, can i ask you to cover the second question sure uh why are they Wasting time talking about, uh, sorry, talking before shooting anyone. <laughs> Do you understand what is about this question? Um, yes, uh, that was what we're 
sorry, what was uh, Josie doing? Um, I think he's doing that to distract the enemy's attention. Um, like he wants to understand um, who will shoot him first, um, as what happened with them when they get out of the grocery store. Um, and when the old man asked him after the attack, um, how do you know the first one and who to shoot? Um, he said um, it's, it was so clear for him that one of them was um, ready to shoot him. <laughs> so I guess crazy that's... ass. He's called it crazy ass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. The, 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 there were two bounty hunter scenes, if you remember. In one scene, there were two mm -hmm. bounty hunters. Yep. Yes. One guy stayed outside and the other guy went inside. And he said, I'm a bounty hunter and I've come to kill you. And yeah. the guy, you know, it's it's a living. I'm a bounty hunter. It's what I do for a living. And remember what Josie said? Nope. Mm. Dying ain't much of a living, son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So, so he kind of psyched the guy out. So the guy got kind of scared and said, maybe I can't beat this guy. So the guy left. But then he had to face his other partner out there and he got shamed. So he came back in and said, I had to come back, you know, yeah. I know. <laughs> and he killed that guy. And then he had the three guys. And this is the only time that Lone Weighty really helped him. He faced three guys. Yeah. And they, they were from police, right? From local police or something. They had uniform. Oh, did they? Okay. Maybe they were red legs. I'm not sure. But, mm -hmm. but, uh, but remember that, you know, remember the Indian that told him, you know, always have an advantage, always have the sun behind you. So the, the three guys had the sun in their eyes. So Josie had an advantage there. And then he had to, the talking parts, like he's, he's seeing who's confident and whose voice is kind of nervous or shaky, you know. So he figured out the two guys were kind of cowards. And they probably would would be slow to draw, but he saw one guy, one guy was was the the th the main threat. So he decided to to shoot the main guy first, mm -hmm. and he was he figured that the Indian would probably get one of the guys. So he just concentrated on two guys, and he told Lone Wadey, hey, "I knew you'd get that guy. I didn't even look at him." <laughs> yeah. Good good team good, good teamwork, right? Teamwork. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Leila, how do you like this title? How would you explain it? As, as usual, it is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I can see cacti, right? Cacti is a plural, usually, right? Cacti. 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 Okay. And uh, another one, cacti, uh, uh, another one. On the top, we can see a wood, right? A wooden shed or something. Yeah, boards, just wooden boards. Yeah. yeah. And some, um, what, some guns. <laughs> so everything, everything is covered from the, from the movie. Right. Okay, let's start from this one. Leila, could you please? Oh, he is um, just working in the field. And it has a, though, sorry. Horse or donkey, I'm not sure. He's wearing a cowboy hat. It is hot and uh, he's plowing the field with a wooden plow. And uh, I think he really concentrated on what he is doing, Ivan. Mm, I, I would say that his plow looks very primitive. <laughs> his, his primitive, made... yeah. Old, very old time. Homemade, so. yeah, homemade. Homemade, yeah. Not because it must be like uh, must be from metal and sharp, and he has a special form. It's like a almost like a spiral at one point. So it's it's a hard uh, a tool. It's a it's a. He's really trying. You know, it looks he is spending a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how we call this animal? Really? I think it is horse, but teacher Lee said it is donkey. Of course, <laughs> teacher Lee is right. 
<laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure, but the face just looks like a donkey face to me. That's I can't what tell. I told you, you're right. Did you yeah. Because I didn't look at the face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and the big ears. They got big ears. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <Come> <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vova, what could you see there? I see the house of the Josie Wells is born. Has been born, born, is born. Has been born. <laughs> And he uh, is running. running. Mm -hmm. To, to his home. To his home. Well, can you see? Can you see this sink on the left of his house? You see, made by stones. Yes. Made by stones from stones. What is this? Uh, It's a stove, right? It's a yes. chimney, right? Chimney. Chimney. Yep. Yeah. So, do you do you know for, for what it? Yes. To make a fire inside, right? Yes. To heat up the building, I guess. To <clears throat> to cook something, probably. So where 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 it's happened in Texas? Actually, where where does it take a place? Where it's built? That's probably a fireplace. A yeah. fireplace where you burn wood to heat the home, and then the smoke goes up the chimney. Yeah, I I mean, uh, do we, do we know in what? Territory it's built. So, do you need to heat your house in the winter? Or not? Oh, yeah. This this is in Missouri, so it gets cold in Missouri. Okay, so they have winter in this place, so they you need to to some heating system, right? Right, right. Down in Florida, you probably wouldn't wouldn't need a chimney really in those days, but up north, yeah. Yeah, and as Leila, as a child of a cold territory, I can say that Americans do everything wrong when they do heating. You know, <laughs> because this chimney, this chimney must be inside the building to heat up the really? whole building. But yeah, but they lose a little, uh, at least a half of the energy for nothing to heating the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. your physics is great, Ivan. Please <laughs> my. Yeah, without this, you just die in Siberia, you know, or you know this, or you <laughs> call to, to the death. Uh, notice I... there's, a, there's a small well there with a little roof over it. Yep. yep. That's a well for water. Yep. And this is a, how we call it, a porch, a special like a building to go inside on the right. Yeah, I don't know if that's, might, might be storage for firewood, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And what is, interesting, what is interesting is that the house is tall. Usually, you know, when we have a lot of land, we don't build tall houses because it's not convenient to go up and down. Yeah, very unusual. Usually homes are only one floor back in those days. I was surprised it was a two-story home. Yeah, so probably a fantasy of a writer. <laughs> <laughs> not a real one. Okay, let's go to another one. Jihan, could you please cover this one? You know what we are doing? So you can, you know, you can uh, just describe the picture in general or the scene, what happening, just, you know, just to enrich your language. So please take uh, any, <laughs> okay. make any story from this picture. Okay, uh, that moment happened when uh, Fletch con uh, Fletcher convinced uh, Anderson's group uh, to surrender themselves, um, I think, to the government at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and Um, that's where they talk of all their um, uh, guns, and they also I, I remember they provided them um, a feast. Um, um, and here's at the um, left side the two official um, mm -hmm. men, um, and in the left they um, they coming one by one uh, to give uh, to give their guns. They move to the other way. Um, Um, I can see um, um, some of them wearing like uh, formal clothes, mm -hmm. while the others they are usual, uh, like any gang. So we, I, I guess, we call it uniform, right? When it's the formal clothes that you get yeah. from your government, it's uniform. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Jesus, they are different, right? One have yeah. a red belt, another have a red hand. How we call Scarf, it? Yeah. Cur kerchief, kerchief. Kerchief. Yeah. Why do you think they are different? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I guess because of because of their rank, so they can be different in rank. One is a sergeant, let's say. I am. Well, I would expect them to be the same, but. Back in those days, it may be that the wife might have made a uniform for the husband, so mm -hmm. they might have used a different color cloth because that was all they could get. I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at, at, on their he heads, and I can see some insignia on one. So I, yeah, <laughs> Elma saw a happy Roger, right? <laughs> a, a sword and a rifle. Ah, okay, so, sword and a rifle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Union yeah. soldiers, the Northern soldiers were called Union soldiers, and they wore blue uniforms, mm -hmm. and the Southern soldiers wore gray uniforms. So sometimes we call it the war between the blue and the gray. Yeah. Bam. The North and the South. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Vasans, could you please look at this picture? Yeah. Uh I'm just sending everybody inside the camp. He will, I, I, forgot, I forgot his name. Uh, what is that? Fletcher, okay. Fletcher uh, was written by the crew member, uh, members because he, he didn't expect them to turn. Turn into violence. And, yeah, this, and this, is, this is the moment when Fletcher is slightly upset by killing of his team, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and he is, what's the word, menacing? They menacing him with a with a guns <laughs> <laughs> to keep keeps him still, right? So stay yeah. here, do nothing. <laughs> Threatening or intimidating him. Intimidating, okay, threatening, good. Okay, let's, wow. Back, back up, back up one, Ivan, or let me show you something real quick. You see in the left, lower left, there's a piece of canvas. Yes. That, that waterproof cloth is called canvas. Mm -hmm. Tents mm -hmm. are made out of it. You'll see that there's a metal ring in yes. the canvas. We call that a grommet. You have like, to write it. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's in the chat. Good, good. Grommet, like vomit, grommet. Mm -hmm. And that's so you can put ropes through the grommet and it'll hold the canvas down, but it won't tear the canvas. Yeah, yeah. You use them so a lot, just, right? Yeah, so just to teach you a new word, that little round thing's called a grommet. Even yeah. shoes, shoes will have a small grommet that your shoestring can go through. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a little piece of metal. We call that a grommet. If it's just a hole, there's no grommet. But if it's a little metal thing in the hole, we call that metal thing a grommet. Um, yeah. Shoelaces digitally go through, right? Shoelaces, yeah. Some shoe, some shoe, shoelace holes are, are just a hole in the leather, but and they don't have grommets. But yeah. some um, some shoes have little metal grommets in the holes. Thank yeah. you. Good one. I, I have never heard this word before. <laughs> That's why I mention it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basans, what about this one? Could, could you please continue yeah. with this one? <laughs> we, we just yeah. discussed it. This thing, yeah. uh, Josie jumped in and started to shoot the uh, other people, the army people, with an automatic machine gun. Uh, not an automatic, but a machine gun. He had to pedal. To roll it, yeah. Uh, right, we we'll call it crank. Had crank. to crank. Okay. <laughs> yeah, looks very fancy, if you ask me. <laughs> looks very dangerous, you know. If someone points the sink on me, I say it okay, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> well, those were mainly only owned by the military back then, the cavalry. Mm -hmm. So if you had one or two of these at a fort. You could fight off a hundred Indians easily, you know. <laughs> you know, very powerful gun. There weren't that many of them. Very rare. 
Yeah. The yeah. the density of the of the fire is very very high, right? It's not like yeah. a single rifle. You cannot reach this density with I don't know with hundreds of soldiers, right? Right, right. One guy could kill a hundred Indians easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like a powerful weapon, right? And we can see the result of this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so yeah, first point of view, point of view from the first person. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep. let's. Ah, it's another interesting scene. Leila, yeah. have you watched this? Yep. <clears throat> they heard, uh, especially Josie, heard that some soldiers are approaching and he made the horses lay down and holding their hats um, next to the ground, make them um, unsilent. And then they lay down just between, no, not between, next to the horses. So they thought nobody is going to see them. And it was true. The soldiers didn't see them while they were just passing through. Yeah. This, so this is actually okay. This is actually the first cowboy movie I've ever seen where someone actually made the horse lie down flat. Horses don't like to do this. <laughs> yeah, that, that's why Could you gotta you hold their head down. <laughs> Could it be possible? Have you have you noticed it, Leila? He he made with a tricky way. He made this yeah, with a tricky yeah. way. He spread their legs, they like first legs. They, he he spread them and then like hit them you know so it was a kind of a trained true trick right yeah but even then Jesse put his hand on the mouth of the horse mm -hmm. i mean is it possible that he, the horse stays still probably you saw it you saw it on film yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you teacher Lee. <laughs> i yeah, guess but... so yeah yeah Nice trick, yeah. Tomorrow I will try. <laughs> with, with your horse? No, my neighbors. So if, <laughs> if, if you can't hear from me, <clears throat> um, please pray for me. Okay. Jihan, could you please take this one? Mm. Uh, yes. Um, here's the moment when they pass um, the river, I think. Um, here's um, behind uh, Jimmy. Uh, who was shot at first in the first attack yeah. um and it seems he can't move and um, there's um two men um i think they are uh, we call them bounty bounty men bounty bounty hunters. Hunters. yeah bounty hunters um they are um like um trying to catch um josie to get the money um and they are holding their guns uh toward him um, yes. And they seemed like they are poor people, so they really wanted that money, and they were they were excited to catch them, yeah. to catch them. Um, Looking on the second guy, you know, the guy is behind on his face. Can you say that he's a confident in what he's doing? I think um, he was afraid because maybe he didn't have any idea about Josie and uh, what he may do. Yeah, his his face doesn't. Doesn't look like you know. I'm a brave man. Yeah, I, I think I think they had heard of Josie Wales before, and they knew he was a dangerous man. Yeah. So one is. guy acted confident, but the other guy wasn't so sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was right, right? Uh, <laughs> After all. Uh, so what happened with this guy? Um, I you mean after this uh, moment? Yeah. Okay. Uh, when they both came to Josie, uh, Jamie started to pretend like he's hallucinating and started to sing mm -hmm. um, to distract them. And also he said like uh, uh, he had uh, a gold with him under maybe his pill. So one of them uh, got close to him, then um, Jimmy um, shot him. Uh, and Josie uh, took the first one who was wearing um, the red uh, jacket and he mm -hmm. shot him too at the end yeah yeah right he was bubbling some nonsense right and about gold so ask him about gold he had or something it was a good idea i guess yeah yeah he, he pretended to be delirious 
James, Josie, Josie, where are you, Josie? I got the money right here, Josie. I got the gold right here, Josie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked out nice. So what what is interesting uh, for me is that you know in all times people wear a lot of clothes, right? So he has a internal short and then a few and then a jacket. So yeah. Not, yeah. Well, <laughs> Lela, why is they why they did it? Maybe it's a way to show off because <laughs> they were off. poor. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe just uh, maybe to be sweaty. To be smelly, so the others can oh. feel disgusted. Oh. Maybe. <laughs> oh. I remember I was reading a book about Jack London or someone like this, and he wrote that you know, for many people, they close. They it was a they like the only property they have, so they try to. It's not like now when we have you know one hundred different t-shirts or something. They had one suit for. For their life, I guess. That, yeah, I, yeah, I can see wearing long sleeves and long pants and a hat just to prevent sunburn. Mm -hmm. But yeah, unless it's cold weather, and this is not really cold weather, it always amazed me too how they can wear all these layers of clothes. I mean, they got to be sweating all the time and they got to smell bad. Oh my God, you know? Exactly. Oh, oh my God, really? <laughs> but, but, but as uh, as Jihan said, uh, to some people maybe if you wear a, a, a you know a coat a suit or whatever, you know you kind of like you know I'm successful. I'm a successful man. So it may have been kind of showing off like I'm not a bum. You know yeah. I don't I don't know. <laughs> maybe teacher Lee, they carry all their belongings on them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, more, totally. more pockets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teacher, this is a scene you talked about. You do you remember this yeah. uh, hunter? They had some kind of uniform. I, I yeah, saw yeah. the, the, the yeah, blue police. uniforms. They were Union soldiers. Yeah. Ah, Union soldiers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And I, I also I always like this type of American doors to sounds. You know. <laughs> to uh, saloon know what doors. What. Saloon it's, doors. Saloon doors, yes. We I call them see. swing. We call them swinging doors. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to find something, you know, for for the last of you. Okay, this one, Vasan, could you please tell about this scene? Yeah, uh, it's that uh, the Indian and Jersey was having the cold, the blood on their hand. Mm -hmm. And you can see Indians with the feather on their head. Their weapon. Yeah, what, what kind of weapons uh, as as this? It's kind of a some some of them are rifles, I can see. Some of them just as spikes, how we call it, just as spears. Spears, yeah. And this, the, these Indians, they they look uh, pretty scared to me, right? They are, <laughs> they are serious. They are warriors. They are not about jokes. They are not going to treat you mildly, right? <laughs> run away, run away, Jody, Josie. Okay, so he, the boss, uh, the how we call the boss, the chief. Chief, yeah. the chief has some feathers, right? In his, in his hair. Typical stereotype about the Indians. So what else? I don't know. Look what at Jose Ivan. Look at his hands. You can understand how determined he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the yeah. Indians. Things about Indians. They did not wear clothes. They just covered their their hip area their genitals yeah. usually with an animal skin uh on horses the indians did not use saddles they just got on the horse bareback yeah so horses wow. didn't use saddles uh they were pretty primitive they they never indians never made cities or towns they just built little tents and they lived in small groups they mm -hmm. never made towns or cities. They traveled a lot. They moved where the food was. Deer, you know, bear. They hunted animals for food. They didn't farm. 
Uh, they were very primitive. They used spears, bow and arrows. They mm -hmm. traded animal furs to the white man, and that's how they got knives and rifles. They didn't make those. They traded those from the white man. So when they got a knife, they were very proud of that metal knife because they couldn't make that themselves. Yeah. <laughs> and they told us how to smoke tab tobacco, right? <laughs> probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, let's call it a day. It was the last slide for today. But I enjoyed the movie, right? I, I don't know why. Maybe because when I was a child, I used to watch a lot of movies with Indians. I still like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like books. You know, James Fenimore Cooper wrote one about last... Who? I forgot. Mo was. Mohican? Mohican, yeah, exactly. It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, I watched more than the half. <laughs> more than half? Yes, half very good. Right. Very good, very good. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Teacher Lee, thank you for your support, for your nice help. Without you, it would not be possible, I guess. Without Teacher Lee, nothing is possible. Yes, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll see you all on, on the next week. And Thanks, we'll... Ivan. Thanks, my friends. And nice to meet you, Jada. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.